Hello and welcome to week four of AFCB TV's preview show. It's been a very busy seven days and we have plenty coming up for you today. We'll be looking back at the games against Everton and MK Dons, as well as previewing this weekend's game against Chelsea. And we'll also be seeing what happened when Dorset Children's Deaf Society visited Vitality Stadium earlier this week. Well, Chris, let's start back at last weekend's game against Everton. Still undefeated. Still going to win the league, as we said this time last week. Yeah, I mean, it all happened last week, didn't, we? didn't it? Um, I think everybody saw afterwards it was great, a great point to come back and get um, from a situation they probably shouldn't have found themselves in in the first place, being 2-0 down. Uh, you know, 10 against 10, lots of drama, lots of debate about the red card decisions as well, which still go on even now. I still can't quite work out whether Adam Smith should have been sent off. Um, I think once Theo Walcott goes to ground, the referee's got a tough decision to make. Um, so, yeah, I think as a defender, try and avoid contact. But it still was pretty harsh for me. Uh, so we're looking back at a couple of decisions over the last couple of weeks. The West Ham penalty, the yeah, sending off against Everton, um, you know, the decisions that could have gone the other way. But, yeah, as you say, still unbeaten. So uh, the, the forward momentum keeps rolling on and everyone, I think, would have taken seven points from the first nine for sure. And, of course, Eddie Howe's side, they've now picked up 25 points from losing positions since the start of last season. What is it about the side and comebacks? It's amazing, isn't it? That, that comebacks ki comeback Kings tag was uh, was sort of launched last year, if you like, and nothing at the moment to, uh, to signal that it's going to be going away anytime soon. Uh, I was speaking to Josh King after the game, actually, last week, and he said that definitely what they did last season helps them in those situations where, you know, teams sometimes they go 2-0 down, particularly at home against 10 men, you know, you're, you'd expect them to fold. But actually... Josh King said it actually almost motivates us in a way that we know we can we can do it. Um, obviously, they'd like not to be 2-0 down. They he did it also say, by the way, I'd like the fact that we could be ahead in games. That would be lovely. Um, but yeah, so at the minute, I think everybody, when Bournemouth go 2-0 down, depending on the opponents, uh, if you go 2-0 down to Man City, it's a long way back from there. But 2-0 down against anybody else, you, you've always got a feeling that Bournemouth can come back. And obviously, we're just three games in, and already both centre-backs have scored, so we've got goals coming at both ends of the pitch. They are, which is good to see, yeah. Obviously, Josh King getting off the mark as well, Lise Mousset, although he's, a bit, he's an injury doubt for this weekend. Uh, again, confidence for all of those players as well. Ryan Fraser, obviously, just uh, keeps popping up and keeps impressing everybody at the moment. Um, so, yeah, the, the goals are coming from uh, lots of different areas. And Nathan Ake, I mean, that six-yard box behind us at the, the north end of the ground is becoming his prowling ground, isn't it? That very important goal against Liverpool, tapped in in there, and then the same against Everton. So... And we saw him come close with a couple of headers already this season as well. So, yeah, he's, he's one who I know is looking to add a few more goals to his game. Well, without further ado, let's take a look at both goals from last weekend in the short highlights. Here's Tosin on the right side. There's a chance to put in Walcott here. And Walcott has snuck in beyond Ake. Is there any support from him? He doesn't need it. Theo Walcott puts his finger to his lips and silences the Vitality Stadium. Everton on the counter-attack. Walcott down the right-hand side. Beat Begovic at his near post. And after 10 minutes in the second half, it's the 10 men in front. record under threat here and the uh, cherries are switched off and all of a sudden Everton had two men spare Sigurdsson to the back post with Keane powers Both out of the game. Sermon drags the defender away. Kings floats the ball in towards Wilson. He's pushed over. That's a penalty. No doubt whatsoever. Wilson barged in the back, wins the penalty. He missed the last one. It'll be Joshua King who gets the responsibility this time. You're absolutely right, Chris. It was a great ball to him. He was going to take it down on his chest. I think if you've just seen it again, he's definitely barged in the back. Try and reduce the arrears here for the Cherries, which he does into the bottom right hand corner. Pickford went the right way. Joshua King halves the deficit. Big 15 to come. Bournemouth 1, Everton 2. Well, we're in this for a real exciting last 10 15 minutes. To be delivered by I in towards the head of Callum Wilson. Off the post. The rebound is in. Nathan Ake! again finds himself in the right place at the right time to score a dramatic goal against the Merseyside club. He did it in the same six-yard box against Liverpool and there he was against Everton to tie it up at 2-2.
Well, there we go. Goals from Joshua King and Nathan Ake ensured that the Cherries still remain unbeaten three games into the season. You can watch the full 90 minutes now on AFCB TV for free. Now, Chris, that wasn't the only game of the week. MK Dons came here in the cup and another brilliant performance. Yeah, and it was, uh, I felt a little bit sorry in inverted commas for a lot of the people who would have come for the first time because it was so comfortable that it, it almost wasn't an entertainment spectacle. Um, it was for half an hour as the Cherries got themselves, um, you know, clear in the game. Uh, MK Dons, you know, they're, they're a developing side under a new manager, they're League Two, but actually things worked out as they probably should when a Premier League team plays a League Two team in that Bournemouth ran the legs out of them, were just too sharp. Um, and it was great to see, you know, almost a fully changed team bar, bar the wee man um, who haven't played together, will have trained together, you know, a little bit, I'm sure, uh, come together so quickly and put, a, put in such a fluid performance. So, yeah, job done. Blackburn at home in the next round is, you know, that, that's another sort of, it's a, it's a good draw, but it's, a, it's another step up in terms of a decent championship side who are, have got a bit of forward momentum. So in terms of the competition, yeah, and in terms of getting people game time, it was a, all in all a very positive Tuesday night. And a thousand extra people here who'd never been to Bournemouth before to, to see a game. So again, getting through gives uh, a lot, of, lot more people a chance to come and see them again. And as you mentioned, 10 changes there. The only player to keep his place was Ryan Fraser. And is he in the form of his life at the moment? But you have to say he is. I mean, he was absolutely frightening. I mean, even against Everton, you know, some of the early runs he makes, when he gets the ball at full tilt, you wouldn't, we would not want to be a defender um, defending against that. And again, just speaking to a couple of the defenders, you know, Steve Cook and other people, about trying to defend against the wee man in training, they say they're just so pleased that when it comes to the crunch, he's on their team. Um, you know, he's in the Scotland squad again. He, he's got a real chance to forge himself to be a, a major player for Scotland uh, and, and really talked about. Um, and yeah, and at the minute, he's just in absolutely blistering form. He's so fit. He looks fit as well. He's, I think he's, he's a real confidence player. I think a lot of, a lot of the creative players often are. Um, you know, the, the ability to take people on. We saw it with Jordan Ibe last season. When he got a bit of confidence, all of a sudden we started to see the, the £15 million worth coming back. So uh, who'd want to put a price on the wee man at the minute? I mean, he, he is uh, key. The fact that Eddie Howe said after the game, Ryan Fraser asked to play in that game, almost to, you know, get himself, keep that momentum rolling forward. Um, he got himself a goal off his left foot as well, which is becoming an increasing weapon for him uh, and being able to use both feet very strongly. So, yeah, he, he is, he's boxed himself into being one of those first names on the sheet at the moment, which... With Junior Stanislas uh, still to come back, of course, as well, and the likes of Jordan I have knocking on the door. There's a lot of competition out wide, but uh, he at the moment is, I would say, the number one. And of course, debuts for Diego Rico and Jefferson Lerma. What did you make of their performances? thought Lerma was really good. I mean, again, let's put the context. It was the League Two opposition. It was a great game for him to come into um, to get a, you know, having had an under-21s run out, a first chance in front of a, a full house here, his own fans, get used to the surroundings. Um, you know, communication, I don't know what communication's like in, in midfield when you don't speak English, but it didn't seem to have, be a problem out there. Um, you know, he looked so comfortable on the ball. He put himself about. He was energetic, up and down. Um, Eddie Howe says he's Premier League ready in terms of his fitness and his, his sharpness. Uh, it's just a question now of whether Eddie is loyal to the players that um, have, have started the season so well or whether the, the, the £25 million price tag, you know, it says he, he needs to go in, really. Uh, so, yeah, I thought he was outstanding. and I think everybody was pretty impressed. Rico, you know, I would say he was good, but maybe not as eye-catching. Maybe it's more difficult to be as eye-catching. What I would say is he, he, he his fitness looked good. He was up and down the whole time. Most of his crosses landed in the right area as well. It didn't always hit a red shirt, but most of them, you didn't see him blow many over the top. None went behind, none hit the first man. Most of them, albeit by one or two possibly, landed in an area that the likes of Callum Wilson, Joshua King would thrive off. So, And obviously that set piece, I think the crossbar is still rocking now from that set piece uh, that he crashed against the bar. So yeah, um, I would say a, an outstanding debut from Lerma and an excellent debut from Rico. And of course, last night we discovered it was Blackburn at home next. Really good to be at home in the next round, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's first and foremost what everybody would uh, would like. Chance to get a bit more money through the gate as well. Um, of course, Eddie Howe has a bit of history against Blackburn. It was 14 years ago that he uh, he scored that winning penalty up at Blackburn. The same stage of the competition, actually, but the roles were reversed then because Blackburn were the higher division team and Bournemouth were the uh, the lower league opposition who no one fancied. So I can remember that night so clearly. A, a DVD was made just of that night, and um, the 3-3 draw after extra time. And Eddie Howe, I think he was penalty number seven or eight. He said he was hoping it wouldn't get to him, but he walked up and drilled it down the middle. So a famous night then. Hopefully uh, not quite so famous in terms of an upset this this time around but again it, as I said earlier it'll be a, 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 t a next level test from MK Dons but another one that the Cherries should come through because there were a lot harder draws in that hat than Blackburn at home. Absolutely well before we move on let's take a look at all the goals from the midweek game against MK Dons. 
bowls it out down the centre to Defoe. He's got options to his right, he sees Mousse. Mousse takes it down well, regains his balance. He's across the halfway line, Ives desperately trying to get up with him. Goes into the feet of Fraser once more. Fraser head down, back to Mousse, inside the penalty here. Poor first touch, not a bad second one, and not a bad third one! Lise Mousse puts the cherries in front. It looked like he'd lost it, and then suddenly he went past the defender, he rolled it through the legs of Lee Nichols, and that came all the way from the goalkeeper, Boric, via Fraser, and Mousse opens his account for the season, and Cherries lead against MK Dons. Jordan Ibe now, all of a sudden, laid off by Lerma, and it's Ibe who's chasing away down the right-hand side. Ibe into the penalty area, can't find Mousse, Lerma back to Ibe, still in the penalty area, chips one in, he'll break for Fraser, and that is 2-0. Easily done, Jordan Ibe this time deserves the credit for the assist, had a couple of stabs at getting it into the penalty area, and it's set up sweetly for the Scotsman, Ryan Fraser. Here's King, halfway over the half, uh, into the edge of the penalty, I should say. Now Ibe, little block onto his left foot, Ibe shoots low, and there is the third. It's been coming for a long, long time, and in stoppage time at the end of the game, it's Jordan Ibe who provides it, a left-footed shot, arrowing to the bottom left corner, and the Cherries are sailing into the third round of the League Cup, three up on dogs. <laughs> Well, there we go, a convincing 3-0 win for the Cherries midweek. You can see extended highlights of the game on AFCB TV for free. Now then, whilst everyone was enjoying their bank holiday Monday, the Cherry squad came in and had their team photo taken. AFCB TV went behind the scenes and you can take a look at what went on. Well, a very busy week indeed. Also this week, the Dorset Deaf Children's Society visited Vitality Stadium and were given a tour of the ground. Let's take a look at what went on. So we've got Dorset Deaf Children's Society here today and what have they been doing? Yeah, we've uh, welcomed to the stadium this afternoon. First of all, we've taken them behind the scenes, taken them into the changing room, brought them pitch side, get to see all the bits they don't normally see when they come to the stadium so that's been great and of course they want to play their own game as well so we're going out onto the training pitches now and we're going to put a little coaching session on for them. It's what we pride ourselves on here at AFC Bournemouth, we want to bring people into the stadium, we, we know we're slightly restricted on the number of people that can actually see a game so if we can open our doors throughout the week and in the evenings and weekends bring people in, let them all feel close to this football club. Dorset Deaf Children's Society came in today. Um, they had a quick tour around the stadium and then they all just sat down just over to my right um, and we just had a bit of a questionnaire kind of thing, uh, speaking about my career and uh, what, what the club means to me really. Yeah. I supported Bournemouth, I came to all the games, so I think it's great that the club can give back to the community and give these kids kind of the opportunities that maybe some other clubs wouldn't. Obviously for me, when I first joined, it was kind of a, it, was, it wasn't really too serious, it was like a community type academy kind of thing back then so to see where I've come from I think it shows to anyone that they can also do it so I think it's great. Yeah it's really important you know we've got this partnership with BT in the Premier League where we're able to op operate and offer uh, disability sessions uh, throughout the week and we've seen our numbers increase rapidly throughout the season and we hope again the following season this season coming that they will, will rise again really about giving players the opportunity to feel safe in a nice comfortable environment and develop their football and uh, we've got a number of the players that are with us today that have gone on and achieving great things through our FA Talent Hub as well. Well, 
a busy week off the pitch. We end it by a trip to Stamford Bridge and Chris, it's uh, it's produced some good results in the past, hasn't it? it certainly has. I mean, if there, if there can be a lucky ground in the Premier League, uh, obviously, you know, Bournemouth have had a couple of great results there. The question now is, where do you go from last year? You had the best result in the club's history, the, one of the best performances we've ever seen. Um, it's, it's hard to know where to come now in terms of expectations will be massive. Of course, it's a new Chelsea team. Uh, we shouldn't forget that. And obviously, Maurizio Sarri is someone Eddie Howe knows very well indeed. He actually went out to Italy when he was at Empoli uh, to study him. He, his, he was aware of him even back then. This was uh, three years ago, I think. Uh, Napoli obviously came here to the Vitality Stadium for a pre-season friendly last year. So, again, Chelsea's fans are probably, a few of them will be, oh, yeah, that's, that was Sarri. So, um, putting that all together, all, by all accounts, he's a very impressive guy. His team played great football. Um, so, a new challenge. And actually, interestingly, it's the fourth successive new manager that Bournemouth have faced to this season because they had Pellegrini at West Ham, they had Marco Silva of Everton, Paul Tisdale in midweek of MK Dons, and now Sarri at Chelsea. So uh, they're, they're certainly getting the, the new manager test at the moment. Uh, I think the thing for Bournemouth is, is it, is it a free shot these days? That's the question. Are these big games away from home still a free roll of the dice? Um, because the expectation is that really on paper and on you know the squad talent, Chelsea should beat Bournemouth all the time but having gone there and won a couple of times all of a sudden now you, there has to be a bit more belief that that is a more important game than possibly it would have been we say oh well it doesn't matter if you lose 3-0 um, they can be crucial points come the end of the season so what I will say is last season all three games don't forget the League Cup game up there where Dan Gosling equalised in the last mm -hmm. minute and then Chelsea went straight at the other end and scored was you know a tight affair Bournemouth won there in the league Chelsea only won here 1-0 in the league in what was a reasonably tight game as well so Chelsea are one of the big teams that Bournemouth have managed to get close to on occasions. Um, in terms of what to expect this weekend, uh, Chelsea unbeaten, obviously they've won their first three, mm -hmm. so they have started in ominous form. Uh, a few big money signings, you know, Jorginho, who they bought from, from Napoli in the centre of midfield, who by all accounts is a very metronomic midfielder, um, adds a bit of st stability to the centre of the park. 70 odd million on a goalkeeper, Ariza Balaga uh, as well, so uh, that's a lot of money for a, for a goalkeeper for sure. The likes of Kovacic, who hasn't played so much yet as well, so some, some big money signings to, to, to bed in there, but by all accounts they're a much, a much happier and uh, looking on paper a much better camp they were last year, so uh, it will be a tough, a tough ask to go there and repeat last year's performance and result, but... As I say, sometimes they're freak one-off results, but Bournemouth have won there twice. So, hey, who knows what about this weekend? And you mentioned Jorginho there. He seems to have really settled in well at Chelsea and he's already gotten the score sheet for them. Yeah, obviously, when you're a foreign manager coming into a, an English club, and you know, you, you, or sometimes you do dip back into what you know. We see it quite often with foreign managers going back to their old clubs to bring players in who they think will be suited to the Premier League. Jorginho is the one in central midfield who... He's brought from Napoli. Um, I haven't seen him yet, but we'll see him this weekend. Um, but only the clips we've seen on Match of the Day is that he, he does seem to have uh, f fitted in pretty well in the centre of that midfield, which is ominous. So whoever gets the nod for Bournemouth this weekend, whether it is Lerma, whether he does get the nod, or whether it's uh, Sermon and Gosling carrying on, uh, yeah, they're going to be with Conte in there as well. It's a, it's, a, it's a tough old test, but it always is against these, these big guns. And in terms of the Cherries team news, of course, Adam Smith is back. How much of a, of a plus is that for, for Eddie Howe? Yeah, I mean, he's, you say he's back. He's obviously, uh, he wouldn't have played in midweek, I don't know if he wasn't suspended, but uh, the fact he's available, he's another one who's had a, a good start to the season. He'll be frustrated, obviously, by that sending off here last weekend. In terms of where Eddie goes, I mean, we've, we've managed to call it quite successfully the last couple of weeks. I would say this week is probably the most unknown, um, whether Lerma gets a go or not. Um, again, as we stand here recording this, I, I think he probably won't put him in. But that I don't want him to, to clip this up and send it back to me on Twitter uh, to say you were wrong because we have no idea. Um, Eddie Howe is loyal to players that have done well. He did say in his press conference and, and to me earlier on that Rico and Lerma, he does consider them to be Premier League sharp uh, and ready to go physically and sort of, you know, in terms of the tactics, they're up to speed. So there is, they're, they're getting close. Uh, Rico, I, I, I would say, is more 50 50 whether he comes in. Uh, I think Charlie Daniels has had a little bit of a niggle. Um, so whether Rico comes in, I would say, is more on, on balance. But I just don't think he'll throw Lerma in at Chelsea away, but I could be completely wrong and probably will be. <laughs> and the Cherries, they're taking almost 3,000 fans up to Chelsea. That'll be a really real plus for the side, won't it? Yeah, and it was great for anyone who came on Tuesday night because uh, there were still tickets available and by getting a point for coming to this game, it meant they could have a chance to go to Chelsea away, which hopefully it being the holidays and not too far away. I know Premier League tickets aren't cheap, but uh, yeah, it, hopefully a few more there will get to experience uh, another great day. 3,000 fans Again, you know, I remember the days when probably taking 150 to Macclesfield or something. So 3,000 fans away from home is absolutely brilliant. They're all huddled around the corner flag, of course. And that, that end of the ground at Chelsea, that where the Cherries fans are, is where most of the drama has been with the, uh, the Glen Murray goal and you know, the, most of the goals last season as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully some more drama to come there this weekend.
Well, certainly a lot to look forward to this weekend. If you're going up to Chelsea, have a very safe journey, but that's all we've got time for here today. Have a good weekend and thanks for joining us.